Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Merchah Kodesh. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the elect. And uh, today we're going to go into the book of Ezekiel, the 45th chapter. And <clears throat> you know, as you can see in the headline or in the subheading, the Lord's portion of the land. So pretty much uh, continuing from where we left off uh, yesterday. So this is Ezekiel, or at least in the last lesson, I should put it that way. This is Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 1. Moreover, when ye shall divide by lot the land for inheritance, ye shall offer an oblation unto the Lord Yahweh, an holy portion of the land. The length shall be the length of five and twenty thousand reeds, and the breadth shall be ten thousand. This shall be holy in all the borders thereof round about. So basically, um, there would be a certain portion when you're dividing the land that would be dedicated for the Lord, and that would be considered like a holy portion, and these were the measurements for it. And everything within that, that radius would be holy, separate. Of this there shall be for the sanctuary, so of this land, the portion that will be allocated for the sanctuary or the temple, uh, 500 in length and 500 in breadth, square round about, and 50 cubits round about for the suburbs thereof. So you'd have um, this allocation for the temple, and then the suburbs, when you look into the word suburbs, it um, one of the definitions there is uh, open field, okay? Um, as you can see here, common land, open field, suburb. Okay, so you'd have a portion allocated for the temple, and then the rest is open land. Continuing verse three. Of this measure shall thou measure the length of five and twenty thousand, and the breadth of ten thousand, and in it shall be the sanctuary and the most holy place. The holy portion of the land shall be for the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary, and when it says ministers, it means the ones that are uh, doing the service, you know. Because remember that these are Levitical ordinances or, or you know Levitic, the Levitical priesthood they're performing these ordinances but you know on a physical level they're taking care of things right when you do a sacrifice there's blood that's going to be there you have to wash the the animal you got to clean the place you got to you know clean the utensils that are used right you got to wash those so there's the, 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 the literal the practical aspect where somebody needs to maintain the temple you got to make sure it's clean right all of these things you had uh, certain Levites that were appointed to do these things. Hence, a portion of the holy place, that, that portion of that land, would be set aside for them. Right? So, verse 4, the holy portion of the land shall be for the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary. So, those that, that uh, uh, do the service. Which shall come near to minister unto the Lord Yahweh. And it shall be a place for their houses and an holy place for the sanctuary. So, I mean... If you are somebody that's, you know, you have duties in the temple, it wouldn't make sense for you to live, you know, <laughs> all the, like, I don't know, like, like two different uh, um, uh, uh, tribal lands away. And then you got to come back here. And it, it doesn't make sense. Verse five, and the five and 20,000 of length and the 10,000 of breadth shall also the Levites, the ministers of the house, have for themselves for a possession for 20 chambers. And ye shall appoint the possession of the city, 5,000 broad and 5 and 20,000 long, which is 25,000, over against the oblation of the holy portion, it shall be for the whole house of Israel. So there'd be a portion for the Levites and then there'd be a portion where anybody, any Israelite can basically dwell. Verse seven, and a portion shall be for the prince, now, in uh, in the 44th chapter, we mentioned the prince as well, you know, which uh, I mentioned being the, the high priest, right? And as we read uh, going on in this in these next few verses, you'll, you'll see that the role that this prince is playing, is it, it only makes sense to be that of the high priest, right? Um, so it says here, on the one side and on the other side of the oblation of the holy portion, and of the possession of the city, 
before the oblation of the holy portion and before the possession of the city, from the west side westward and from the east side eastward, and the length shall be over against one of the portions from the west border to the east border. Now that, that, sound, that may sound a bit, you know, confusing, especially because of the old English as well. So I'm going to read the same verse in the NLT and you know, that, that makes it a bit clearer. All right, so it says here, the prince will have the land bordering each side of the area formed by the sacred district. And what is the NIV? So like, yeah, uh, to, I meant to read the NLT. It says two special sections of land will be set apart for the prince. One section will share a border with the east side of the sacred lands and city. And the second portion will share a border on the west side then the far eastern and western borders of the prince's lands will line up with the eastern and western boundaries of the tribal areas. Okay, so that's a bit more clear. Verse 8. In the land shall be his possession in Israel, and my prince, uh, my princes shall no more oppress my people, and the rest of the land shall they give to the house of Israel according to their tribes. Because, you know, remember when you we uh, read, <clears throat> I've, even in the lesson yesterday, you know, I talked about the different wicked acts that, that, that the uh, princes and the priests, you know, were doing in terms of not only oppressing um, the, the, the Israelites or the people, but also just defiling the ordinances of the Lord. So the Lord is saying, well, with this, it's, it's clear. Everybody has what they got. Verse 9, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Let it suffice you, O princes of Israel. Remove violence and spoil, and execute judgment and justice. So pretty much, let it be enough, you know. All this wickedness, enough is enough. Okay, stop the violence, stop the spoiling, the robbery, and all of that. And instead, execute judgment, righteous judgment, and justice. Take away your exactions from my people, saith the Lord Yahweh. Yeah, so, so, because, you know, they would use their authority to basically take advantage of the people. The Lord is saying, no, you can't do that. Verse 10, ye shall have just balances and a just ephah and a just bath. So now it's going into the um, measurements, right? Today, you go to, usually now, when you go to a grocery store, a lot of the different things that need to be measured, like meats and stuff, are already pre pre measured and they're labeled on label if you're getting it pre-packaged but if you go to like an actual you know butcher or you know one of these areas they there are still areas where they actually weigh whatever it is you're trying to get right so back in the ancient world of course things will be weighed you know whatever it is that you're trying to get and you had different um measurements right <laughs> which were based on different materials right so in this case you had an ephah and a bath and typically the ephah would be to measure you know dry more dry substance and a bath for more liquid substance but the lord says have adjust balances right so typically let me see if i can find uh ancient world balances Uh, weights and balances. So I just want to see if I can get a, a quick demonstration. Uh, do, 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 do. I guess this or something like this should do. And um, so how do you how do you find out if 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 something is of a certain weight, right? Well, you have different weights right and each weight is you know is, is allocated a certain number and so you place that on there and then you place whatever object that you're placing on here so maybe for example you have a, a bowl or a cup or something and then you do a scoop of maybe some barley and then you pour it in there and the the, the reason it's called a balance is because that they're supposed to both of these are supposed to line up because initially when this cup is empty and the weight is on here this part is going to go down. This part is going to be up. So as you're pouring whatever, you know, one scoop of barley, then another scoop of barley, the more you're pouring, the, the, the more this weight is coming down and this one is going up. So eventually they are leveled. 
And that tells you that however much you've poured into this cup is equivalent to whatever this weight is. So the Lord is saying use just balances because in the ancient time, well in Israel, and not just Israel, but um, at least for what we're discussing here, the they would find ways to um, to uh, scam people. Okay, for example, I might get uh, I may use an un unjust weight and say, ah, oh, this is heavier than you know maybe whatever it, it, I whatever it's uh, known to weigh. Right? Maybe I'll tell you this is one pound, but this rock actually weighs like two pounds. But I'm saying this is a one pound rock, and then I place it on there, or or even vice versa. Right? This pound, this is uh, supposed to be a one pound rock, but it weighs half a pound. You know, so if it weighs half a pound, that means whatever I'm giving you is less. I'm pouring less in here in order for it to 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 line up here. You know, but anyway, there were just many ways that they would they would be able to use this to, you know, to be unjust. So the Lord is saying here, no, you use just balances, a just ephah, a just bath. All the measurements should be according. The ephah and the bath shall be of one measure, that the bath may contain the tenth part of an homer, and the ephah the tenth part of an homer. The measure thereof shall be after the homer. So the homer would be the standard. Like today, you have a gold standard. So you may say, one ounce of gold is worth three American dollars. Well, one ounce of gold is worth two Chinese yuan. That means three American dollars is equal to two Chinese yuan because we're using the standard which is gold if I was to trans trans um, convert dollars into gold I should get the same amount you know like if I if I convert three dollars into gold and I convert two yuan into gold that do that gold should be the same that's how you you you, you uh, standardize different measurements or currencies because the currencies we use today are just a measurement of something at least they should be um, so the homer here would be the standard that is being used verse 12 and the, <clears throat> and the shekel shall be 20 giras 20 shekels 5 and 20 shekels 15 shekels shall be your uh, mana which once again these are all different uh, measurements Verse 13, this is the oblation that ye shall offer. The sixth part on, of an ephah, uh, of an homer of wheat. And ye shall give the sixth, sixth part of an offer of, a, of an ephah, of an homer of barley. Concerning the ordinance of oil, the bath of oil, ye shall offer the tenth part of a bath out of the core, which is an homer of ten baths, Four ten baths are an homer. And one lamb out of the flock, out of two hundred, out of the fat pastures of Israel, for a meat offering, and for a burnt offering, and for peace offerings, to make reconciliation for them, saith the Lord Yahweh. All the people of the land shall give this oblation for the prince in Israel. So they would, they would when they bring their offerings, they would bring it to the, you know, the priest. Okay, and it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings. So his role would be to, to actually, you know, offer them and drink offerings in the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths in all solemnities of the house of Israel. Okay, which goes to show you that the new moon, okay, and the Sabbaths are, are you know, pretty much uh, the same, right? Like the, the new Sabbath is dependent on the new moon. Why didn't it say full moon? Anyway, he shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. And you can read a lot more about this, as you can even see in the book of Exodus and Leviticus. There's more uh, details about the role of the priests and the different you know, families and uh, the high priest himself and so on. Verse 18, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, in the first month, in the first day of the month, thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish, meaning that this bullock can't have been, you know, it can't have any faults or defects on it. It has to be nice and perfect, fresh. And cleanse the sanctuary. So the, the cleansing of the sanctuary, you would use this bullock to do so, and this is what you would do. 
And the priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering, and put it upon the posts of the house, and upon the four corners of the of the settle of the altar, and upon the posts of the gate of the inner court. And I believe in the book of Leviticus or in the book of Exodus, and it talks about you know some of the the rites or the rituals. Um, you know, for one of them, I think it might have been this, <coughs> the sin offering, but it could have been a different one. Basically, you know, same thing. You would dip the blood upon the, the four horns of the altar and the priest would sprinkle the blood, I think, seven times or so before the, the entrance of the holy place and, and also and so on and so forth. Verse 20. And so thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for every <clears throat> thou shalt do the seventh day of the month. For every one that erreth, and for him that is simple, so shall ye reconcile the house. So for those that, you know, if you go off, for example, right, you make a mistake, but you sinned, or you are simple, you know, you, 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 you know, you were just made a, 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 you sinned out of simplicity, okay, then the priest, the high priest would perform the sacrifice to make reconciliation for that individual. Verse 21, in the first month, in the 14th day of the month, ye shall have the Passover, a feast of seven days. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. And so remember that, and that's a, a, an important point. <clears throat> For the Passover, yes, you're, you're not supposed to eat uh, leaven, but you are, you are also supposed to eat unleavened bread for each day. Okay. That's why it's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Not only are you staying away from, from uh, leaven, but you are actually eating unleavened bread. Verse 22, And upon that day shall the prince prepare for himself and for all the people of the land a bullock for a sin offering. And seven days of the feast shall he prepare a burnt offering to the Lord, seven bullocks and seven rams without blemish daily the seven days. So for each day of the feast he would do this and a kid of the goats daily for a sin offering. And he shall prepare a meat offering, which when it says, <coughs> when it says a meat offering here, it's, it's really a gift offering, which is a, uh, or, or, um, yeah, a gift offering, which is an actual meat. Okay. I believe we look into this word here. Yeah. So he says gift offering, sacrifice, you know, grain offering, and you'll see why. If you if you if you think it's actual, you know, if you read it as though it's talking about actual meat, then you'll be confused. Okay, but anyway, it says he shall prepare a meat offering for an ephah for a bullock, and an ephah. Let me see, Mister. Yeah, and an ephah for a ram, and a an hin of oil for an ephah. Okay, so you for you would have the the grain offering. You know, or the the, uh, the gift offering, which is you know usually like flour, which come you know which comes from grains, um, an ephah, and with it a bullock, okay, and then another ephah of that of that um, of that flour, and then with it a ram, and then a hin, which is another measurement of oil, you know, for an ephah. In the seventh month, in the fifteenth day of the month, shall he do the like in the feast of the seven days. Now I believe that's the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. So for those seven days as well, you would uh, the priest would do the same ordinance that we just read. According to the sin offering, according to the burnt offering, and according to the meat offering, and according to the oil. And that is the end of Ezekiel, the 45th chapter. Lord willing, that was edifying to the elect. In closing, I want to give all praise, this honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash, and until next time, shalom.